talk a little bit about your hotel brokerage side. Have you been able to uh, still keep that business going as well? Maybe you were able to help some guys that might have been, um, you know, trying to to uh, uh, relieve themselves of some properties because of the situation. How's that? How's that side of your business going? So during the 2020, during the year 2020, that was also very difficult because. Um, you know, the sellers didn't know if this was going to um, go on forever and now the value of their hotels were really affected or if, you know, by miracle, we would see a spike up uh, in, in a big, nice, nice recovery. So, uh, so the sellers were keeping their expectations pretty high on pricing and the buyers were very nervous. And even if you had uh, a buyer and a seller, you know, agree to terms, financing was nowhere to be found for the majority of, of, of 2020. Still today, you know, you have um, difficult times to find a lender that will actually be comfortable lending on hotels. Um, but uh, I've seen this change in the last quarter of 2020 and 2021. So on the upper echelon, where all the CMBS notes are, you know, I'm talking the bigger print, the bigger uh, uh, box, the bigger hotels, uh, and their industrial or corporate owners, um, they usually don't have any personal guarantees towards those loans, and they have access to their lenders directly. And it's either, you know, here's the keys, you can come after me in any ways, or they'll do a workout of some sort with those with those banks. So that is actually being taken care of at that level, if you want. The where I can come in and really help um, is on the smaller uh, uh, size guys, the people that have hotels that they bought the hotels between three to 12 million. It's a huge gap, but the three to 12 million dollar uh, area is where um, these hotels were either financed uh, through community banks. Uh, there's usually a recourse, meaning that there's personal guarantees involved, um, and the bank that those smaller banks cannot just write off these notes, right? So they have to, and, and, and there's a personal relationship between a, this banker normally and the borrower, uh, and nobody wants to break that, but at some point, if you can go on, you can go on, right? The banks has the, the, the responsibilities. And, and this is where we can come in. As a broker during the first downturn, I helped a lot of these mid-size owners or smaller size owners to either unload the hotel for the for what they owed or a little bit more than what they owed and or were, I was able to successfully um, uh, structure several short sales where um, uh, you know the bank takes a little bit of a haircut but we, we still make sure that the borrower um, personal guarantees are not enforced uh, we did all sorts of creative um, transactions that way where we came in not as a shark not wanting to go and foreclose or, you know, come in at a, at, 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 with a steel price. Um, we came in with the intent of protecting the borrower as much as we could, representing the bank and having, you know, a deal that would be um, beneficial to the buyer as well. And by creating those win-win-win situation, uh, community banks don't see us come in, come in as, a, as a threat at that point. Neither does the borrower. We're here to, to help. And uh, hopefully the PPP money and the stimulus uh, package are going to allow most of these guys to survive 2021 still. And hopefully, you know, things really pick up during third and fourth quarter of this year. And, you know, we can not look into uh, uh, flurries of foreclosures. But if that doesn't happen, we can help um, on, the, on the brokerage side. We definitely can help. Uh, uh, the mid-size owners to to survive this as well and deal with their banks and their behalf and vice versa.